What's up my Sentry Unit? It's the Sentry Man here, so back again with another episode review of What's If, Series 1, Episode 7. The title of this episode is called, What If Thor Were an Only Child? For me, this is my favourite episode so far of Series 1 of the show. A lot of people just don't like this episode. There's many reasons why they just don't like it. I'll get to that part later on in this review. This is way better than the previous episode, What If Kill Moga Saves Tony Stark. This, that was the weakest episode of the show. I think, like, that episode was so uncompleted. I think that episode was so rushed. This was not. Um, it's all about Thor going down to planet Earth, having parties, causing mischief, causing destruction. And, like, the same, uh, the, really the name of this title, What If Thor Was An Only Child. There's some image of what if... You know, Odin having to take Loki to Asgard. Like, there was one image, like, he really returned Loki back to Yonhai, to um, Lalfi. Because in the live-action MCU universe, um, I'm guessing, like, Odin ruined Loki. Because in the first movie, uh, Loki, you know, he's Wanda. He doesn't know who he is. I think, like, Odin... Uh, told him that he's not really as guardian because it's been months since I reviewed the first Thor movie. Um, he could be as guardian, you know. Maybe uh, Laufey and Frigga have this affair right behind Odin's back. You, they just have sex, you know. Out goes Loki. Um, I don't know, man. But um, maybe I don't know. Like in this episode, the relationship between Loki and Thor. Um, is good, you know, so, yeah, yeah, because he's no longer, yeah, because in this universe, you know, Loki's not the god of mischief, he's just a proper frost giant, you know, yeah, I think, like, yeah, like I said, I think Odin ruined him, you know, because he, you know, because he favored more of Thor instead of Loki, because he can't break through the, the Thor glass ceiling to become a ruler, I'm guessing in this universe, in this episode, he's maybe he's a, a ruler of Jonenheim. I'm guessing, like, because in the movie, like, Loki kills Lalfi. Um, I'm guessing, like, um, yeah, Loki is now a prince of Jonenheim, or the ruler of Jonenheim, not becoming the god of mischief, this evil, conniving person. You know, he's just, you know, him and Thor. Their relationship is good. Um... You know, like, um, I think, like, you know, maybe, I'm, I'm convinced that, um, Lalfi and Frigga have this affair behind Odin's back. Maybe, I don't know, but, um, he has some funny moments, you know, in this episode, like, with, um, Tom Hiddleston, you know, once again reprise his role as Loki, because we haven't saw Loki since episode three, you know, what if, you know, the Avengers, ha you know, been killed, you know, you know, he wants revenge, you know, who killed Thor. You know, in that, on that episode, but in this episode, he was good, he was funny, you know, like, um, you know, there's one, ep there was one moment of the episode, you know, yeah, Thor's gonna get trolled by Frigga, you know, that's Thor's mother, like, oh, you gotta help me clean, and, and, and Loki says, nah, you know, she's not, she's not my mother, you know, and also he grabs, like, I think one of his minions, like, the Frost Giants, kind of, like, grab the, the St. Louis Arch, and he says, gonna make it, uh, make it, uh, into a slung, sh slung shot, sorry I'm stumbling, but, um, and also there's one scene like, you know, like, uh, Loki's on the phone with Jane Foster, you know, maybe he said, maybe we can have a double date, and he dropped the phone, I kind of like, you know, I kind of like, um, this version of Loki, I think this version of Loki was shown in the, you know, it was kind of like a variant of the Loki show I, I just covered months ago, showing images of different version of Loki, I thought it was the Hulk Loki, but no, it's the Frost Giant Loki, you know, what if he never, like I said, never went to Asgard as a baby, and, you know, he's just, you know, becoming a ruler of Jonenheim, you know, which is a, a proper Frost Giant, you know, I, I, and also in this episode, speaking of Odin, in this episode, he was in the Odin sleep, you can tell this episode set in the first Thor movie in 2011, I'm guessing, like, the Dark Elves, they're still around, but they're never... Uh, you know, evade Asgard and killed um, Thor's mother. Uh, you could tell, like, Thor's mother was still alive, so 
I don't think we're... Yeah, we never mentioned the elves ever again, but um, you can tell, like, the relationship between the Frost Giants and, you know, the Asgardians are really on good terms, you know. You know, I don't know. I don't know why they started it. They, you know, they fought for 100 years, you know, and Odin taught Loki to Asgard, become, you know, races like his own blood, flesh and blood, and... He's just, you know, he's just, you know, he's just, like, faced the fact that he's no, he's not really his flesh and blood, he's, you know, Laufey's son. Anyway. Uh, yeah, and, you know, yeah, we've got, it's shocking to see, uh, Chris Hemsworth reprise his role as Thor, because, um, you know, he's stick around, because Tom Hiddleston and, and Chris Hemsworth, they're sticking around the MCU, because they really like the direction of their characters, but um, it's good to see, you know, Chris Hemsworth reprise his role as Thor because it's been a long time since uh, since End Games. They kind of Disneyize the characters. It's not like the Thor you see in the first movie. It looks like yeah, it was the Disneyized version of Thor. It's Thor without the beard, and also and also we got like a yeah, Natalie Portman's first appearance in the MCU for the first time since Thor two in two thousand thirteen. Reprise his role as Jane Foster. It's, it's good to see Natalie Portman back in the MCU because yeah we got the um the new Thor movie coming out next year so um it's good to see them once again because you can tell like the narrative of the episode compared to the first movie that um in the first uh movie in the first live action movie there was no way that um L L uh, Thor and Jane will you know in love together like you know I think like it was so forced in this episode. You know, in the live action one, you don't see, you know, Thor and, and Jane going to a tattoo parlor, having tattoos, you know, like in, uh, Jane's shoulder has, uh, magic with Thor's hammer, and in Thor's shoulder has the word science with the microscope on, on Thor's shoulder, you know. And also, Thor kind of, like, slightly, um, mocked Jane of her height, because, like, Jane kind of, like, taps Thor in the back, or... On the shoulder, and Thor's looking up. She look, and he looks down, like, "Oh, uh, oh, you're so tiny! I nearly stood stood on you." Yeah, because uh, I never knew that uh, Natalie Portman is that short. I thought she was a little taller. But um, and also, yeah, he give you know basically giving her compliments, like you've got great eyes, and you know he has some good cameo appearances of the um of this episode. And also, we've got uh, Kat Dennings for price her role as Darcy Lewis. And she's not really, uh, her character has also been Disneyized, you know, because in the live action, in the first two Thor movies, and also in WandaVision, you know, Dorothy has, like, glasses. In this, in this episode, he, she doesn't wear any glasses, you know. I kind of like uh, Darcy Lewis, you know, Cat Denning, so, yeah. There's many reasons why they don't like this episode of What If. Maybe it's the direction of the Thor character, just basically... You know, doing a lot, really causing mischief, causing a lot of destruction without any consequences. That could be the reason. Um, he's basically a drunken frat boy in a good way. And it also has to do with Cat Dennings. I think, like, people just don't like Cat Dennings, you know, Darcy Lewis. But I I, I think, with, I'm going to give, uh, yeah, Cat Dennings some credit. You know, I kind of like her, you know, she's kind of like the comic relief. There was one moment, like, in this episode, you had, um, you have her marking out towards Captain Marvel, like, uh, oh, you got a cat? What's the cat's name? And Captain Marvel says, Goose, Goose, like Top Gun. Um, I compare that to, in the first movie, she completely had that look on Thor's body, because, you know, Thor was topless, you know. That's a typical girls, you know, girls really had that look on hot men, you know, without any shirt. Because they're ripped and muscular. It's one of my favorite Captain in moments of the MCU. But um, yeah, I, it's not their cup of tea that they just don't like Cat Dennings. But um, you know, I, I find her a little bit annoying. But I mean, she had some moments. Like in one scene, you had a yeah, you had Darcy, you know, basically marrying uh Howard the Duck, and that was funny. And oh yeah, speaking of cameos, there were a lot of cameos in this um episode. You had the the scrolls, you had uh, Drax, uh, <laughs> you had um, uh, Nebula, funny Nebula. You know, we never go. I think like in in this show, compared to the live action Marvel stuff, we never see Nebula with some 
you know, with personality and charisma, you know, she's always serious in Guardians 1, Guardians 2, Avengers, Affinity War, and Endgame. She was serious, but in episode 2, you know, what if uh, in Charla's Star Lord, in this episode, we saw some pers- we saw some charisma, and and also like um I think like she appeared moment later on in this episode, like oh you gotta help me and then you know because like I said Thor's getting trolled by her, his mum and then you know Nebula just walk out says you know do you want want them to clean up and Nebula says nah my dad's calling me I'm guessing like in this universe, um. Nebula and Dan Arthur are on very good terms. And also we have some, another cameo appearance of the Grandmaster and Topaz. Uh, Grandmaster is you know, voiced by uh, Jeff Goldblum. You know, I like, you know, this episode is, you it had, it had the Ragnarok presence. You know, I really like Ragnarok. You know, back in 2017, you know, it's been months since I reviewed Ragnarok. But back in 2017, I never liked it. But I watched two, uh, I saw it twice. It's still one of my favorite movies of the MCU. You know, I think, I don't know why people just don't like it, it's just what it is, you know, just watch Ragnarok, you know, it has some Ragnarok uh, presence, you know, you know, your Topaz and uh, the Grand Master, played by, uh, voiced by Jeff Goldblum, you got Takia Waiki, who directed Ragnarok, who appeared in this episode as Korg, you know, it's funny, like, he injured uh, Nick Fury, you know, Nick Fury trying to stop the party, says, um, Spicoli, it might, it might be your party, this is not your planet. Before <laughs> you say that, before people is gonna get hurt, and then Korg kind of charged, say, say, basically saying a uh, ball cannon. He posted me cannonball because uh, it was basically cannonball near the fountain. He knocked over Nick Fury. I think like you got yeah, Kobe Smuggler's replies. Her role is Maria Hill, is acting director. You know, you know like yeah, you know he's not got killed off. I'm guessing he got badly hurt. I think they missed the opportunity seeing like an image of Nick Fury wearing bandage up after that he's accident by Korg. There's one funny scene after after like the party scene, you know. You know, I'm guessing like uh, Marie Hill find out the uh, you know the evasion of Thor. You know, <laughs> it's, uh, I think like um, you know Jane says, um, "Can you wait until breakfast?" Um, I can't, and he had that look, you know, Marie had that look, says, really? He didn't, she didn't really say really, but, like, kind of had that really look. Um, but, um, yeah, there were some funny moments. And also, you got Frank Grillo replies, his role is Rumlo. And Rumlo is a proper baby face. He's not, like, a heel in this, um, you know, in the in the live action stuff and in the in episode, free episode of the show. He was a baby face, you know, do, you know working with, um... You know, because this is this is why if you know, you know, basically like Shield's working with Hydra. You know, he's still working with Shield without the notions like Hydra's working with Shield all along. You know, anyway, so he has some funny moments like um, <laughs> like the nukes uh line. I'll get to that a little later on. Uh, the one I think the the two guys, the two like actors and actresses, never replace a role for this episode. Uh, Drax that was played by Fred. Taskioni, I think that's um that's a, that's a really her his name I don't know, and um what's what's a, a Brie, uh yeah Brie Larson you know Captain Marvel it's not Brie Larson who plays her role it was someone else I like I like you know the show because you, you don't have the actors you know and actresses replace her roles that their, their roles you can have someone else to match their voice you know I think the actress who voice you know Captain Marvel in this episode was good you know. There's one funny scene in this episode when uh, Thor and Captain Marvel fight. I think the fight scene were good. Well, they're fighting in France and in England. Um, they were fighting uh, at Stone Edge, and I think uh, Captain Marvel says, "I don't know what they are." They're knocking down Stone Edge, and <laughs> and also uh, you know, yeah, Thor called, called her a party pooper, and he said like, "Yeah, my mom always give me a timeout. I never learn. Maybe it works on you because you're a party pooper." And then people just point. At Captain Marvel says, "Pooper, pooper, pooper, pooper," and also like um, this. And also you got like uh, what's his name? Uh, Clark Gregg reprises his role as Coulson. Um, yeah, Coulson and Maria Hill together for the first time since the eight was it the Agents of Shield show. And also like, he and also like you thought that you know you know you also think that the 
they're trying to nuke Thor, and, and Coulson says, um, I thought she was the nuke. I think, like, uh, Carol, you know, Captain Mold said in, in this episode, like, if I use my full power, I can end up, you know, you know, causing, like, a, a, a really, a, really end up destroying, destroying this planet, um, he, like, like she, she, she says. Sorry, I'm stumbling, but, um, and also, like, you had Romulo says, you know, you know, like, basically, Maria Hill is about to, like, launch the, the nukes, but she kind of changed her mind, and then Romulo says, man, and we, we never got a chance to launch those nukes. Kind of like, I kind of laughed at that, you know, he said, like, we never launched those nukes. <laughs> you know, yes, you know, Romulo is kind of like um, a, a goodie in those two um, episodes of the show. He's not like Crossbones yet. It's shame like his character got killed off in the live action MCU. But he's, you know, depending if they, depending on episode two, depending on season two is going to be confirmed. I think it's likely because Loki's getting a second episode, a second season, sorry. So anyway, so, but, but, but. Trying to remember some, and also like yeah, I've been like um, you know um, Frigga coming, you know, really a hologram version of Frigga coming, to you really telling telling off Thor, and Thor says oh we're, we're studying you know culture exchange or was it exchange culture, and and also he fixed it, you know he had the whole worthy thing. It's very funny that in the first movie, um, Odin took Thor's powers, but in this episode he didn't. He was still in the Odin sleep. I don't know. And it made people like really fix the um the landscape of around the world, the, the landmarks of the of the countries. And also, yeah, he had, he had uh, Clancy Brown reprise his role as Sutar. I never knew it was Clancy Brown, you know, playing Sutar in you know in the, in Ragnarok and then in this episode. You know, I thought it was someone else. It's, I like Clancy Brown. You know, I I don't mind SpongeBob SquarePants, and I I really like him reprise in his, in the role as Lex Luger in. Superman anime series, Justice League, and Justice League Unlimited. You know, he's a really good actor, Clancy Brown. And, yeah, for his acting as well. But, um, um, it was it Uka Uka from the uh, Crash Bandicoot games? <laughs> anyway, so, he kind of <laughs> broke the arm of the Statue of Liberty, and he kind of fixed it. And also, he's, like, playing, uh, what's it called? Um, not Limbo. What's it called? Yeah, Limbo. You know, basically, you just, you got the bar and... Was it Kong? Was it got? Yeah, I think it's Limbo. I can't remember the the game. Basically, you go, you know, you got the bar. You have to, you have to like go low. How low can you go? You know, he kind of like like took down some power lines. You know, and also there's one scene like Thor basically straightening up the Tower of Pisa. He's not. It's no longer the like Leaning Tower of Pisa. It's just basically the Tower of Pisa. And also there's in the in in what in, in the end scene, yeah, basically Thor. Teaching, you know, teaching, uh, uh, basically Asgardians, you know, and trying to buy in to raid. And also the funny part, like he's holding his hammer, and his hammer was de decorated. And also, like he pins down Captain Marvel. I thought Captain Marvel would be the third person in the history of the MCU lifting Thor's hammer because um, um, Vision did it, and Ca uh, Captain America did it, you know, in End Games. But I was wrong. Actually, fourth because Hela did it. I mean, Hela was, Hela was, Hela's original weapon was Thor's hammer, like in Random Rock, she kind of crushed it with her own hand, it's like, um, and also, yeah, 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 Thanos grabbed, you know, Thor's Stormbreaker, you know, it's good to, it's good to see, you know, Thor, you know, Chris Hemsworth reprise his role in this, um, episode, you know, it's not the last time we see him on the show, they might do, you know, like, um, you can kind of like some remake version of the first Thor movie. It's good to see Natalie Portman back in the MCU. Um, it's like, uh, yeah, they were doing their experiments, you know, in the beginning of this episode without Selvig. They kind of name dropped Selvig, but Stalin Skarsgård, you know, did reprise his role. Yeah, Batista did never reprise his role as Drax. You know, he had, to, um, you know, Yondu was part of the, it was, at this point in time, was a background uh, scene, you know, a background character instead of, a, like, a co-star of an episode of this show. You know that you know you know it's not you know you, I know Yondu's played by Michael Rocker, Mantis. You know, anyway, um, it's got some cameo appearances, and also there was a another cameo appearance of 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 Rockets. You know, sleeping in a tank in a you know in a sink. I'm gonna say tank, but sleeping in a a, a sink in Jean's room. And also, I feel like they teased it like oh you know teasing like 
they're gonna break up, you know, um, I, you know, I, this is not cool, blah, 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 but they kind of have that date, you know, we, I, about, we, I know a planet full of, uh, unicorns, and also, they said about, like, Gary the Goat, <laughs> about like they discover like they basically crash this destroy this planet yeah we're we're in this bomb and then you know Frandal <laughs> curled, curled up with this goat and then and then Frandal says I named him Gary it says maybe we could see Gary in this episode probably in, not this episode but in the rumors like they're gonna do a crossover episode that will be the series finale of the show but um, we don't know yet it's not yet confirmed yeah, the yeah you know, the end of this episode, you saw half Ultron and half Vision. You no, know, the Watcher says, you know, um, maybe this maybe this this story has a happy after. <laughs> and then you see, yeah, seeing um Ultron Vision, I speak so soon. So yeah, and you had um you know Ultron Vision with all six Affinity Stones. Ultron could probably wipe out the whole universe because when Thanos did it, he really wiped out. 90% of the people, the population, really the creatures around the, the galaxy. But um, with Ultron, he'd probably do it because, in yeah, in Ultron's motive in Age of Ultron, he basically wants to destroy the world, destroy the, the planet. You know, that's really his goal. Vision is basically just rob he's just he's just robot, slowly but trying to become human. So, yeah, um, Ultron Vision is basically from a different universe. Um, I think probably, I think Thor will probably get killed by Ultron. I think it's what if, like, if Ultron managed to, like, really got, get his conscience into Vision's body before the Avengers got it. You know, where the, uh, Wanda touched, you know, Vision's body and he saw, she saw, like, her, you know, the, vi the vision of, <laughs> Vision, Vision, the vision of the planet getting destroyed, you know. You know, because Wanda has telekinesis. Um... Uh, the part, what, I hope they do one of these days do what an episode one if um Wanda haven't created the Westview universe. They'll probably do that in episode, in season two. So I think I covered most of it. I think I did. You know, it's yeah, we good cameo appearances. How were the Doc Marion Darcy? Um, let's see, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just think. I think that's it. I think yeah, I think that's it. I think I covered most of it. Uh, yeah, I think, I think, do I miss something? One second. No, I think I covered most of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think I covered most of it. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I kind of laughed when the watcher says, "I spoke." Sp remember this? Um, I'm gonna say it again. I thought maybe this story ha ha really happens. Really happen. Really, maybe it has an, a happy ending after all. I'm trying to say. So I'm kind of stumbled. But um, yeah, he said like, "Hope maybe this story ha ha really ha ends happy after all." And then you know, and, you know all. The Ultron Vision, I spoke so, so, so soon, sorry I'm stumbling. <laughs> sorry I'm just kind of stumbled, you know. Sometimes it's very hard to remember dialogue, but it's what it is, you know. It's just like he kind of, he spoke so soon about this um, episode has a happy ending. I think the last time we had uh, this, uh, uh, an episode of What If, happy, and happy ending, I think it's episode two. Because the last, I think it was the last three episodes, I think it was three episodes, um... The um you know the event yeah the Avengers you know the Avengers um dying was happen re ends with a bad ending um episode you know, with the Doctor Strange episode that was had a bad ending the zombies episode bad ending um you can call it a bad ending in episode uh the previous episode bad ending this was kind of like a bad ending with in a funny way so you know so. Episode two is the last time with a good ending, you know, you know when uh, Yandu took Inchala back to his home planet, back to his home in Wakanda. So, so yeah, um, yeah, that's my review of episode seven of What If. We got two more episodes to go. Um, overall, I think that this show is good. I think um, this is. I think it replaced uh, Loki as the third best show. Oh, in the Disney Plus app, in the Marvel side, you know, it's the best, yeah, because uh, Loki is a good show, I think it had, um, uh, you know, you had a bad season finale, but I think, look, I think with What If, it's a better show than Loki, no disrespect, it's still a good show, but I think, I think this show not Lo Loki out of the water, you know, we've got the, uh, the final two episodes of the show, 
I think this week's episode is, I think it's what if Spider-Man becomes Doctor Strange and then there's rumors they're going to do a crossover episode. They've got to do like a one hour episode, cram all these stories together to have a conclusion. But I, I think it's unlikely, but um, it's wait and see. So yeah, I hope you enjoy my review of Series 1, Episode 7, review of What If. Leave your thoughts and comments below, smash the like button, click the like. Be part of the central unit if you're not subscribed to the channel for more wrestling videos and more. Watch my previous episode reviews of What's If, Loki, Falcon and Winter Soldier, WandaVision, and my previous movie reviews of the MCU movies from all three phases. So this is Central Man Official signing out. Check you later. We'll see you next time for another episode review of What If.